So we got Stephen Wibble on the line. And Stephen, thank you so much for joining us uh, this week. And uh, frankly, we haven't had a lot of people come on the show to talk about what you are going to today. So this is going to be pretty interesting, interesting and exciting. So why don't we start off by you giving a quick introduction about who you are and what you do? Absolutely. Thanks, Jack. I appreciate you having us on today or having me on today. Uh, my name is Steve Weibel, Light Bible, and I'm the head of business development for a company called Credit Suite Incorporated. And what we are and what we do is we teach business owners how to build a business credit profile so that they can protect their personal credit. So they can get credit that's tied to the company only, not tied to them personally. Sure. Can you talk, let's start there then about the importance of doing that step. And especially for, we have a lot of newer investors. So uh, I think it's probably important for people to get this right, at least in their mind from the beginning. Absolutely, Jack. And, and this is probably one of the biggest critical mistakes investors make, all business owners, as a matter of fact, right. uh, is they jump right in and they've, it's been so ingrained in their mind to put their social security number on every credit application. Mm -hmm. They just assume that's the way it's supposed to be. So the biggest companies in the country all utilize business credit. In other words, Sam Walton never personally signed for credit for Walmart, mm -hmm. right? They, they build up, and remember, their entire business model is based on business credit. If you buy uh, furniture, paper towels, doesn't matter from Walmart, they haven't paid for it yet. Mm -hmm. that's, that's on credit. So we show business owners how to do that. And the first thing that we want to talk about when we talk about getting business credit is setting up their company so they're credible. You know, if I get a little too deep down the rabbit hole, I apologize. I just get super excited about this. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we talk about credibility, it doesn't mean that, that your, your listeners companies aren't credible, but when applying for business credit, almost every company uses artificial intelligence to get you an approval. Just like if you apply for a credit card online, you get that instant approval or worse, you get that pop-up letter saying we'll be in touch in 30 days, right? Mm -hmm. Business credit works exactly the same way. So they're looking for certain red flags in that application. One of those flags would be what type of phone you have. Now, I know, especially in the real estate world, because as we discussed, I flipped over 300 properties, so I understand the business. We give out our cell phone as our number. Mm -hmm. Or worse, we give out a Google number now. Right. Well, unfortunately, that's one of the red flags that banks use to look for fraud. Hmm. And if you look at it this way, and there's a lot more pieces to it, but if we talk about phone number and address, if I filled out a credit application, let's say it was a rental credit application to rent one of your properties, and I put down my name and then my email was, I don't pay my bills at yahoo.com. Mm -hmm. uh, and my phone number was a throwaway cell phone and my address was a PO box. Would you feel really comfortable running that property to me? Yeah, no, I get your point. Right. So we, so we, we understand that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to help business owners set up so they're credible. They have a legitimate website. They have a legitimate email. They have a legitimate mm -hmm. phone number. Uh, and not that a cell phone isn't legitimate, but it needs to be listed in the National 411 directory. I assume you're old enough to remember, like I do, when you would pick up your phone off the wall, dial 411 and get Joe's Pizza down the street. Yep. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Now, what blows the millennials away is that directory still exists hmm. to this day. And all legitimate businesses have their business listed with the National 411 directory. Problem is you can't list a cell phone. You can't list a Google phone number, but you can list what's called a virtual phone number, a voice over IP, something like Ring Central or Grasshopper or companies most people have heard of. Sure. You'll know if you have it if you pay for it. If it's free, can't be listed. Right. So these are some of the things that we do. Once we help the company get set up properly, then we move them into what we call tier one or step one of business credit building. Mm -hmm. And we show them where to apply to get credit Typically, this credit is going to be something called net 30. Are you familiar with that term? Yeah, but I think you better define that a little bit further. I threw that ball right at you. Figured you would say that back to me. Yes. <laughs> so, so net 30, what that, what that basically means is uh, I give you credit to buy something from me. You buy it. I ship it to you. I send you an invoice and you have 30 days to pay me. Mm -hmm. That's a net 30 or net 55. Obviously, it would be 55 days and so right. on and so forth. So typically that's what you're going to get for credit when you're new. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Home Depot even has a separate division just for that type of credit. Sure. It's a whole separate company. Anyhow, so once you have a couple of those reporting, you can move on to tier two. Tier two is actually store credit, credit with places like Home Depot and Lowe's and Staples. And uh, just think of a store. I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, I, I've had clients get credit at Saks Fifth Avenue on the business name. Mm -hmm. you know, they swore they were buying gifts for customers. I highly doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was around Christmas time. Anyhow, so that would be the next step. And then from there, you can move on. It just gets bigger and better. Uh, everything from fleet credit to vehicle. In other words, buying your vehicle and the company name not tied to you personally. Mm -hmm. Visas, MasterCards. But more importantly, what we've effectively done by teaching owners this is we take all the day-to-day -day operational items and move them from their debit card, from their personal visa card, from their MasterCard onto the business credit profile. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't have to tell you what happens when your utilization goes crazy on your personal credit. When it goes up and down, what does your score do? It goes down. Right, exactly. So without all that utilization happening on a regular basis, you've effectively protected your personal credit score. Mm -hmm. So that if that fourplex pops up or that single family rental, that's just an amazing deal. Uh, and you don't want to do the hard money interest rate. You want to actually get a loan to do it. You've protected yourself. Mm -hmm. You've left your credit score high enough that you can, you can step to the plate. And more importantly, your debt to income ratio is completely changed too. Mm -hmm. Imagine if I suddenly removed your car payment, your visa cards, moved all your personal credit in, onto the business profile. What would your credit score look like? Oh yeah, I'm sure it climbs. In fact, that's funny you say that because recently I paid off uh, one credit card um, and uh, I, I instantly like within a few, you know, because you always get those credit cards sending you like here, your credit score is, is this, you right. know, um, I, I almost instantly saw a bump. Um, oh just yeah. From that. Yeah. I actually, I, I, when I bought this house that I'm in now, I actually planned it because I've been in real estate for a long time. I understand how the credit scores work. And I, I made sure I got a proof for a card, used it, and paid it off completely three months in a row. My score dropped 50 points. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, yeah. Anyhow, so, so if a real estate investor does what I'm talking about, it's going to open up opportunities for them. Plus, it's a complete mind shift. You, you, every time you go to buy something, you're going to think, wait a minute, can I buy this in the business name? Mm -hmm. it'll change the way you think. Now, those who are new, I assume didn't live through the 2008 debacle, which didn't affect many people, maybe just me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I can tell you that after that, although I personally was hurt with the income that I lost and whatnot, I had no debt tied to me. Mm -hmm. None of my business debt was tied to me. So I was able to walk away clean. And not that anybody's expecting to fail, but you certainly don't want to plan to fail or not. You certainly don't want to fail to plan. Right. 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 So that's what we do. Uh, and then the question is, how's this tied to real estate? Right. I mean, I gave you one example. Right. I'm going to give you the example that I learned and why I'm so in love with what we do. When buying your first property or second property or whatever, if you, if you use hard money, I don't have to explain this to you, Jack, but, but hard money companies will fund your purchase with mm -hmm. you putting some skin in the game. And then the second way they make you put skin in the game is they'll hold back the construction. Right. And then you'll repair a certain percentage that's agreed upon up front, whether it's 25%, 50%, whatever the number is, and they'll give you draws against that. Mm. Right? You've got 50% of the construction done. They'll give you what they held back 50% of it. Well, that's great. But the problem with that is what if you run out of cash? Right. right. So now you've got this money sitting in escrow that you can't have access to because you don't have the cash to finish putting in that kitchen or the bathroom or, you know, whatever right. you run, you run into a septic issue that you didn't see coming. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what if you had a $25,000 Home Depot credit card and a $30,000 Visa or MasterCard? Mm -hmm. Could you get that problem solved? Yeah, it'd probably make a pretty sizable dent anyway. Exactly. So what you've done is you've effectively effectively freed up your cash flow too. Mm -hmm. You're not panicking. Right. So now I did this, but think about that to the tune of five properties at once. Mm -hmm. And then what I was doing was taking the draws and not paying off the credit cards. I was flipped because houses were flipping so fast back then. I was taking that cash and buying five more properties. Mm -hmm. I was putting deposits on five more. 
and just, I scaled it from zero to 300 in under two years. Sure. So, yeah. Well, so there's lots of ways to look at it. So business credit just gives you a lot of flexibility. Right. So let's, let's back up there for a minute. Like, is this something that's possible for everybody? Like, even if you're like brand new business? Absolutely. Uh, I will tell you this. You have these gates that they put in there. Uh, I call it the, you know, their little escape hatch. There are certain t companies that will have that if you're not two years in business, they're not going to approve you. But what we found is that that's their escape hatch if you do the minimum. So for example, to get to store credit, you need at least three trade lines reporting. Right? Trade, line, trade lines would be uh, like something like a credit card on your, in your name. So a mm -hmm. trade line would be a vendor or something like that reporting in your business credit. Well, we tell you minimum of three to move on to the next tier. What I tell every one of my customers is, look, what happens when you do the minimum in life? What do you get out of it? Mm -hmm. You get the minimum, right? Yeah. So well, I know you're I, reminding me of an office space. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so what I tell people is, look, if we ask you to do three, do six, mm -hmm. do five. So then when you get to that, that company that requires two years of business, they're going to look at your profile and go, well, we need 10. They've got 18. They're a solid company. Mm -hmm. And, and they'll let you through. So it does work for brand new companies. Matter of fact, if I start a company today, within six to nine months, I'll have fifty to $100,000 in credit for my company because mm. I know the process. Right. I've always thought that would be a great business plan. Start a company, build up business credit, sell the company with the business credit. Yeah. Huh. It has value. Right, right. So um, can, can you get a lot of this business credit with, without a personal guarantee? All of it. All of it. When I'm talking about, you can get all of it. Now, I will, I want to clarify because a lot of real estate investors contact me and say, look, I'd like to buy a house with business credit. That's not going to happen. That's just never mm -hmm. going to happen. When we're talking about houses, uh, especially if you're talking about mortgages, they're backed by Fannie, Freddie, FHA, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a box of rules. And one of them is your credit, your personal credit. However, if you own multiple properties, when, when, your listeners who I'm sure are going to own multiple properties because you're teaching them at some point, they're going to want a blanket loan. Right. And they're going to want a commercial loan. In other words, well, when you apply for a commercial loan, they look at 225 data points with you, starting with your personal credit, going all the way around to your business credit profile up into all the credibility things that we talked about. Mm -hmm. The difference between having just a personal credit profile and that the rest of that wheel could be, a 50% LTV versus a 75% LTV uh, loan to value, mm -hmm. uh, a rate of 5% versus 8%. So it literally could cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars to not have a business credit profile. Sure. Sure. So how about those people who like they don't have, they, in fact, they don't even have enough money to start a business. Is there a way to, to leverage this or how do they, how can you get some, uh, maybe get a loan without, without the, that type the of the business history. credit. Yeah. Well, there's two, there, there's, there's multiple things here. You have business credit and then you have funding. And people get confused and I get it because of the terminology. Mm. Uh, let's say you had somebody with a 680 credit score that was looking to start a business. Sure. I would suggest to them the unsec unsecured business financing program. And what that is really is a series of high limit credit lines at 0% interest that you personally guarantee, but reports on your business credit. It's kind of like okay. a shortcut to build your profile. Sure. It's no doc. They don't ask about income. Uh, they don't ask about assets. They don't ask for anything. Just do, they'll ask you about your income, but it's stated. It's not verified. Right. So if you were thinking about starting a company, you can get up to $150,000 that way. Okay. That's the route I would suggest people go. But okay. as a startup, that's about your only option if you're looking for business credit because they're, they're always going to look at you personally. Right. So, and, and, and uh, is that part of that tier one strategy that you're talking about? Well, the tier one doesn't require your personal guarantee, but you can skip those tier ones by doing the personal guarantee on this other program who report on your business credit. So there'll be five trade lines reporting that are all high limit. If you didn't right. want to deal with the net 30 accounts that we discussed. So the, it's, a, it's an insider secret, kind of a shortcut. Sure. Okay. So like if, if people wanted, like, where do they start? Like you, 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 we've already talked about the, the, the business credit cards and the, 
and the in the local stores is there any place else that they should be thinking about that that could possibly be reporting as a business line that that uh, just maybe a phone call I, part of me is thinking like Verizon you know I'm call I'm, I have a personal credit personal cell phone would me switching to a business line would that be part of a business credit uh, yes and no they don't report sprint is the only one i know of that actually gives it they don't okay. report but they they also don't report on you personally so it's in the business name but let's say i'm going to give your listeners some uh not an inside secret but but their first trade line they can go to a company called quill q u i l l dot com okay now quill is like a tiny little amazon they sell everything from office supplies, toilet paper, computers, uh, you name it. It's about a million products. Mm -hmm. They are one of the first vendors we recommend because they will give credit to brand new companies. Okay. Now, you may have to buy from them once or twice. You have to buy a minimum of $50 from them. Uh, but once you do and they trust you, they're going to begin reporting on your business credit. So that would technically be your first business credit trade line. Okay. However, there's some steps prior to that. You're going to need your Dun & Bradstreet number, your Dunn's number. Mm -hmm. You're going to need to be registered with Experian, your business identification number with Experian. Uh, if you're unsure how to do that, and I know we don't have a three-hour podcast here, you can go to dnb.com. That's like the letter D, David, the word and, and then the letter B, like boy, dot com. Mm -hmm. Now, I will warn your listeners. DNB has the world's greatest telemarketers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the world's greatest telemarketers. They will call you incessantly once you apply and try to sell you something. Right. Because they're required by law to give you that number for free. So they have to monetize it. So they're going to convince you that you'll never get business credit. You'll never get a loan unless you pay them X dollars, whatever it is. Sure. To begin adding trade lines. Well, the problem with that is they're all manually added. They're not real. Uh, because if you don't pay them next year, they're shut down. Mm. The lines don't report anymore. So don't do it. Don't fall for it. Just get your free number and move on. Um, they're, like I said, they're great telemarketers. When they call me, I try to hire them. Mm. <laughs> so uh, you can go there and get your, your Dunn's number. Prior to doing that, make sure everything with the Secretary of State and the IRS matches. Same address, same phone number, same spelling. Everything's identical. Sure. Because in the, in the business credit world, it's reported by address, not by your number. Like okay. with us, it's our Social Security number. With in the business credit world, it's all reported based on your address. Okay. So we'll tie the name and the address together, and if it doesn't match, they won't report anything. Okay. So that would and, be the first steps. I'm sorry. No, I was going to ask you know, like when you talk about the address, and you mentioned this before, like PO box is typically probably not ideal, but you know, in the real estate investing world, a lot of gurus are pushing you towards a UPS store because of the street address. Yeah, uh, you're grinning and, and nodding. You must have knew I was going there, huh? Yes. Uh, listen, I get it. And they're, I, I love to say the same. They're on the right street going the wrong direction. Okay. So back in the 70s, uh, the virtual office industry mm -hmm. sued and won to be recognized as an actual office, but they have to have that virtual office SIC code. There are very few that actually do. I can give you two that absolutely do. One's okay. Regis, R-E-G-U-S. Yep, we have Regis offices around here. There you go. And Alliance Virtual is the other. They are legitimate virtual offices. UPS box is not a legitimate virtual office. A PO box, not a legitimate virtual office. Mm -hmm. And look, I get it. Especially if you're a landlord, you don't want your address, your tenants to have your address. You want them to mail the rent to a PO box or something right. that, that protects your identity. Um, virtual offices are nothing more than a PO box. They'll forward their mail to you. Mm -hmm. right, but they look like a big, huge building, seven stories. You've probably been in them where they have a common receptionist and there's 50 yep. offices. Right. Uh, and, you, and you don't even necessarily have to take the office space. You could just be listed on the phone directory. Mm -hmm. That's the route you need to go. If you list a UPS box as your address, you will automatically be denied. Automatically. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, yeah, and I know a lot of gurus are giving that info out, and I appreciate what they're trying to accomplish, but it literally is the exact opposite of what you need to do for what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Sure. Yeah, and, and I mean, we actually used U Regis for a while because there's different tiers associated with what they provided, and, and at one point, we were having them answer our phone calls, and that's all we were really using them for. Right, 
Right, absolutely. Uh, my very first, my printing company, I started off in a virtual office. And I had it for a year. I loved it. I had a conference room, I had an office, I had a receptionist. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need to go to that level, but at least they are recognized as an address to lenders. Right. So, you, I mean, you've given quite a few people a, 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 enough information to be dangerous here <laughs> exactly today. Exactly right. <laughs> so, uh, to make this smoother for them, um, so first of all, I usually, I'm going to stop myself before I go any further, but I usually ask is, is there some a topic or a question you wish I would have asked here today? You know, no, you actually did a fantastic job. Everything you asked me is exactly what I would have talked about. Um, I, I appreciate that, Jack. <laughs> no, I appreciate having that positive feedback. Um, with that being said, there is seems to be a lot of moving pieces to this. And I could definitely see that people would find a lot of value just talking to you and working with you directly. How do they do that? Well, what I would suggest they do first is go to our website. If you don't mind, I can give you the address. Yep, you bet. And I'll make sure it's in the show notes. Okay, it's creditsuite.com. Suite is spelled S-U-I-T-E. And on the homepage, you're going to see download your free business credit building guide. I would start mm -hmm. right there. Sure. Right. There's your basics. It's free. Nobody's going to bother you. Uh, and then if you have more questions, you can always reach out to us at info at credit .com and somebody will reach out to you, including myself. You can mention me by name. I'd be happy to call you back. So, well, I, I really appreciate it. This was very insightful and I hope we can do it again. Absolutely. Thanks, Jack. I appreciate you having me on today. Yeah. Thank you.